for he is worthy of our praise. No man on earth should give glory to himself. All the glory must be to the Lord, to the Lord. All the glory must be to the Lord. For he is worthy of our praise. No man on earth should give glory to himself. All the glory must be to the Lord. No man on earth should give glory to himself. All the glory must be to the Lord. No man on earth should give glory to himself. All the glory must be to the Lord. Let's worship and give him all the praise. He is worthy to be praised. Thank him for bringing us to his feet to land tonight. Give him all the glory and all the honor. This God is our God and forever and ever and ever he will be the same. Worship him, worship him. Worship him. Hallelujah. Give him all the glory. Give him all the honor. Give him all the adoration. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Holy Father, we thank you. Precious Jesus, we give you glory. Sweet Holy Spirit, we honor you. Blessed be your name forever. Glory, 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 glory. Mando Koshabadi and the Karado say, Lord, as we have come, only you can teach us in such a way that we will understand. Only you can expose your word to us. As you are opening your word to us, you are opening yourself to us because you are the word and you are the, the, the speaker. You are the origin. You are the beginning. You are the middle. You are the ending. Lord, reveal your word to us. Open the book to us. Bring us into the fullness of your identity in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Satan, we bind you. We cast you out of this place. Yes, you cannot be here because this is not your place. Yes, so tabara the other gadaya. We cast you out of this environment, out of the airwaves. Holy Spirit, we say take over. Take over absolutely. Take over absolutely. Take over absolutely. Right now, Holy Spirit, take over our ears and our heart and take over the lips of mine and declare your whole full counsel. Do what no man can do. Ah, my God and my Father. Nicodemus said, No man can do these things except God be with them except God be with him, except God be with him. And you told Nicodemus, this is not the ordinary realm. He that is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Nicodemus was confused. He said, how can I be born again when I am old? Do I enter into my mother's womb and be born? And you open his eyes. You open his eyes and said, the wind blows where it leads. We don't know where it's going or whether it's coming. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. By your spirit, oh God, teach us. For your spirit will teach us and guide us into all the truth. Oh Lord, lead us into the the truth of your word and let your name be glorified tonight let your name be exalted in our lives in the precious name of jesus i thank you because you are here oh blessed be your name jesus hallelujah hallelujah yeshua amasia lion of judah Agunishema Yeshua 
Amasia, Lion of Judah, Agunesheba, Yeshua, Amasia, Lion of Judah, Agunesheba. Yeshua, Amasia, Lion of Judah, Agunechemba. Blessed be your name, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to specially welcome everybody again to our Power Bible study. We are going to go one more time to our scripture, our test scripture uh, for our um, teaching. We started last week. We're looking at growing in the light, how to grow in the light. And one of the first thing, we, we, we call this spiritual growth series. And then we, we're looking at how to grow in the light, the importance of the word of God in our growth the importance that the more we take in the word of God, the more light we begin to demonstrate, the more light we begin to display. Well, I don't know about many people, but I love demonstrating the power of God. Honestly, my, 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 my uh, accepting Christ as my Lord and personal Savior, in the time and in the year I gave my life to Christ, those days, it was the generation of power. It was, the, 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 there were a lot of demonstration of power. Of course, I have told you that the place I was born and where I grew up in, the land I grew up in, is a land where power must be demonstrated. Or else, you will become handkerchief in the hand of the enemy. People can just, you know, handkerchief, the way you use handkerchief, you just wipe your face. That's the way some people will be without power. It is the demonstration of power I saw in the things of God. I said, man, I like this. Because uh, in those days, if you don't have power or you don't have somebody powerful that is behind you, you are living dangerously. And it has not really changed. It's just that in this generation, we have more talk and less action. We have more talk and less action. So, so then I, I, my father and the Lord began to show me that there is need for you to have the word of God in you so that you can demonstrate more of God. You see, you, have the, you need the word of God in you you need to eat well so that you can demonstrate the power of God. You can demonstrate the life of God. You can demonstrate the abilities of God well enough. If you don't feed your spirit well, you will not be well. You see, so you need to feed your spirit man well so that you can be well. You can be well in your spirit, just the same way you feed your physical body well, and then you are physically healthy. So also you must feed your spiritual body well so that you can be spiritually healthy. So, and then he told me about the importance of prayer. Honestly, I discovered that the more you pray, the more you understand the word of God. The more you pray, the more you pray, the more you give yourself to prayer, to prayer, the more you, 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 you are on your knees before God, the more you are, you, are, you are living a prayerful life. Those days when I gave my life to Christ, when you meet a Christian brother and you are greeting, you said, how are you, brother? The first, the other, the next question that follows is how is your prayer life? How many scriptures have you studied today? Oh, which revelation do you want to share? And that's the way God has led me to bring up sons and daughters in this, in this kingdom also by his grace. I, 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 I tell you, this is the secret of living the eternal life that God has given to us through Jesus Christ. 
It is in the word of God. Let me tell you, there are two things I learned from the word of God. Now, if I did not study the Bible very well and I don't live a prayerful life, I will not know those things as much as I do understand them today. For example, I learned something. And one of the things I learned is understanding spiritual authority. Spiritual authority. My knowledge of spiritual authority is almost to a fault, if there is anything like that. I try as much as possible not to abuse spiritual authority because I have seen people that have ended up as casualties because they dishonor and they disregard and they, and they disdain, you know, they bring to disrepute a spiritual authority, what I call spiritual jurisdiction. You, must, you, you have a spiritual authority in Christ, but you must understand also spiritual jurisdiction. Jurisdiction is where your authority, the boundaries of your authority. If I don't read my Bible, I will not really understand it. Yes, I will know that there is government. I will know that there are territories. I will know that there are, there are, there, there, there are uh, uh, national boundaries and all those kind of stuff. But I will not understand the place of the same jurisdiction and authority in the spirit realm. And many people, you see, they have violated spiritual jurisdiction and authority and they've lost. They've lost out. They've lost out. They've missed out because they violated spiritual jurisdiction. I just want to share this with you because sometimes if you don't read your Bible and you don't live a prayerful life, God will not open up some very deep mysteries to you. And you can never know the word of God too much. You see, <laughs> any amount, any revelation that is available to you today is a litio of what God has made you see. There is much you don't know. That is why I am always wondering why somebody will become proud in order, you know, you, you are just exposed to a particular operations of the spirit and you just become proud as if nobody is greater than you, as if, you, you see, pride, pride go ahead before you fall. You must understand, even demons understand organized jurisdiction, organized authority. Demons have understanding of jurisdiction. You remember uh, Michael, Michael in the book of Jude with, um, with uh, Satan, you know, Archangel Michael, they were struggling over the body of Moses. You remember that encounter in the book of Jude? Yes. You know, you know Mike, Michael the, was an archangel or Michael is an archangel, just like uh, Lucifer was an archangel in heaven. And they were struggling. Michael couldn't prevail against Lucifer because both of them operate in the same jurisdiction, in the same rank, the same rank. He couldn't until he said, the Lord rebuke you. He couldn't say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, even though Christ has come and gone at that realm. No, because he's only believer. He's only us. We Christians, we who are the light of the world, we who here in this terrain, we are the one in charge. It is only the blood-washed believer that can rebuke Satan and say, now get out in Jesus' name, and he will go. So what Michael had to do was to enforce a higher jurisdiction over Satan. And he said, the Lord rebuke you, Satan, and Satan let go. And he let go. So you need to understand. And that was the same thing that the sons of Skivas violated. They violated spiritual jurisdiction. Their father was a priest, and so they thought, and they've seen Paul minister. So we command you, demon, to go in the name of Jesus, whom Paul is preaching. That is why the demon told them, the Paul you are talking about, I know Paul. The Jesus you are talking about, I even know Jesus. But who are you? I do not understand the premise on which you are exercising this spiritual authority. In my own jurisdiction, the demons were like, come, come on, what is wrong with these guys? Let's check them out. And they discovered that they were fed away. They had nothing in them. So we need to understand. There are many people that have brought themselves under physical casualties. They become spiritual casualties. Yes, I know you are anointed. Yes, I know you are graced. But there is a reason why God placed a pastor over you. There's a reason why God placed a minister over you. 
let me tell you something. Every man of God that God placed you under that grace of that ministry has a throne in the realm of the spirit that is speaking for him. Every man of God, every general overseer, really called and truly called by God, are you get what I'm saying? Have a spiritual throne, a spiritual throne that is speaking on his behalf. That is why many people, even the man of listening, be careful of be careful when men of God are quiet. Why did I enter into this? I'm trying to tell you that the word of God is so important. It's so important. If I don't, I will not know what I know today if I don't study my Bible, if I don't read my Bible, if I don't read my Bible. Listen. Even the joke I was hearing from one of my fathers in the Lord, he said, even the joke of a prophet is a prophecy. Don't joke with it. I don't know whether you get that point. <laughs> when the day I heard it, I was like, what? Even the joke of a prophet is a prophecy. I said, okay, now nah, it's okay. So I am careful because you do not understand when a man of God is operating and is speaking from Nayot Rama, and you are like, oh, he's joking again. He's not a joke. Be very serious. Look at the prodigal son. The prodigal son came to the father and said, Father, I am tired of your operation or your authority and your jurisdiction. And he left under the covering of his father's jurisdiction. Immediately, he went under a different covering. He began to understand that a king is only a king in his own kingdom. When you go to another kingdom, you submit yourself to the principles of that kingdom. A king is only a king in his own kingdom. This is very, very important. We must know. I learned this. The things I tell you, I learned from studying the word of God and the, I'm praying and the Holy Ghost open me up into them. Don't allow anybody to tell you, oh, you don't need prayer. Oh, you are praying too much. Oh, all this fasting, fasting, fasting is too much. It's not too much. Soak yourself in his presence and God will open up his light to you. This is very, very important. And one of the reasons, some of the reasons, not even one, some of the reasons why many people violate a spiritual authority or a spiritual jurisdiction is because of fame, money, education. Do you know that there are some women today, they have not been able to rise into the fullness of their ministry because they have violated the jurisdiction of their husband. So many years ago, I was not married at that time. I was not married. I was hearing, I was, I was in, in one corner sitting down. Then I was hearing a group of women, elderly women, advising a young girl that wanted to marry. <laughs> look at what they were telling. They said, look, anything your husband say, just be quiet. When you're, especially when your husband is on, when your husband is angry, you know, especially when your husband is angry, don't talk, keep quiet. Don't say a word. I, in my mind, I was like, ah, ah. Is that no foolishness? Why we should not talk? You, I mean, I was not married. I was a small boy at that time. Why we should, in my mind, I did I dare, I dare not open my mouth and talk in that place. I was in the corner. But in my mind, I was, ah, why we should not talk? Is she not a human being? Why we should not talk? How will somebody be treated in here and she will not talk? Later on, I discovered that ah, there was great wisdom. Great wisdom. Great wisdom in that thing that they were teaching that woman. I also observed something. They said, you know, I told you one of the things I learned from the Bible and, and through prayers is spiritual authority and oh, obedience, submission, loyalty to spiritual authority and know your jurisdiction. Can you imagine me now come to the house of one of my pastors and say, hey, hey, uh, you woman, come here. And the husband is sitting there. And the husband is my pastor. Is it that he's going to fight me? No. Is it that she's going to No. But that woman is under an authority in that house also. So I cannot go into another person's territory and just exercise, what I call territory is jurisdiction, and now begin to exercise my own authority in another person's jurisdiction, it will be out of order. And that is what many people do. Tomorrow morning during the, the prayer mountain, I will be challenging illegal jurisdictions. I will be challenging illegal authority, authorities that have entered into 
illegal territory, we need to tell them to go. We will handle that tomorrow. Another thing I learned from the Bible is the need for you to know your father. If you don't know your father, you are not a proper son. You are not a proper daughter. Know your father. Some people say, oh, this person is my father in the Lord. Do you know your father? This person is my mother in the Lord. Do you know your mother? Know your father and know your mother. <laughs> this is very, very important. So some people, everybody is their father. Everybody is their mother. Those are, well, I'm not saying in the generic term. I'm saying that you need to understand your spiritual identity. This is very, very important. Now let's go to our scripture for that we've been studying in the book of Romans chapter 5, verse 17. Now read that. And remember the second scripture is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. In Romans chapter 5, verse 17, it says, For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. Jesus Christ. Knowing fully well that even me, your father and the Lord or apostle, um, I learned most of the things I learned from the word of God. The word of God has the answer to everything. Forget it. I'm telling you, you have the answer to everything. I don't care what anybody says. There, does the word of God have the answer to this? It has the answer to everything. Everything. Pray that God will open your eyes and you will see answers. Through the word of God, live, in, in the, live a life of prayer. For if by one man's offense, death reign by one, much more day. You see, offense, one man's offense, one man's sin, death came. He said also those who receive abundance of grace through Jesus Christ will also reign by one in life. We will reign in life. We will reign in life. We will reign in life by what Jesus Christ has done, by the obedience of Jesus, by the obedience of Jesus, we will reign in life. By the disobedience of Adam, by the disobedience of Adam, man died. Man began to, to experience a lot of afflictions and harassment. But by the, by the obedience of Jesus, we now who accepted Jesus, we are now, we are now given the privilege we have been given the audacity. We have been given the opportunity. We have been given the leeway to reign in life by Jesus Christ. That's powerful scripture. That's powerful. That's not just banana bread or banana leaf. That is the powerful word of God. And you need to, if you understand Romans 5, 17 in your spirit, you know the kind of life you are supposed to live. You understand the kind of identity you now carry. Ephesians 5, verse 8. Let's look at the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. You see that powerful scripture there. You know, I told you last week, I'm no longer in the business of rushing uh teaching because i want us to understand the word of god so that when we pray we pray with understanding he said for you we are sometimes darkness i told you last he didn't say you were sometimes in darkness this scripture said you were sometimes darkness you yourself you were darkness myself i was darkness he said but now we are light you see powerful look at the two things some time ago we were darkness now we are light. He said, what should we do now that we are light? He said, we should walk. We should walk. We should walk as children of light. We should walk as children of light. This is very, very important. And then we talk about a lot of things last week. I'm going to continue from where I stopped last week. When you believe in Jesus, what did you get? What did you get when you believe in Jesus? Remember, we're talking about the eternal, eternal life that, we, that entered us. The day you gave your life to Christ, you have eternal life that entered into you. You are not ordinary anymore. You are not ordinary. The devil is afraid of you. You know, devil is afraid of you. All that he's doing is gra gra. He's just trying to, 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 to show, but he's scared of you. 
if only you understand who you are in Christ. Now we go to John chapter 6, verse 47. John chapter 6, verse 47. John 6, verse 47. Powerful scripture. Jesus Christ is the one talking in that place. John chapter 6, verse 47. Look at it. Verily, verily, I say unto you. You see, this is one way to learn and to study the Bible. As you are hearing verses of scripture like this, maybe it's getting too fast. Take a pen. Take, take, have a notebook. This is how to grow in the things of God. You can never get to a point in your Christian life that you cannot take note again. <laughs> we still take note. I still tell you, brothers and sisters, that there are places that there are people that I submit to. There are people that can still flog me. That's what I was talking about. Understand this spiritual authority and spiritual jurisdiction. Now, if you get to a, the most dangerous point to get to in life is to get to a point that nobody can talk to you again. Ah, at that point, you are finished. Never get to a point, never grow <laughs> to a point that you that nobody can talk to you again. Ah, you should always have a son, have a light that you look up to. Have a light you look up to. Look at verse 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me have everlasting life. Look at it. He that believeth on me have everlasting life. So if you believe in Jesus, you have everlasting life. And Jesus was very emphatic about it. He said, verily, verily, surely, surely. Another scripture say, as surely I say unto you. You see, there are no redundancy in scripture, no tautology. You only have emphasis. He said, verily, verily, I say to you, if you believe in Jesus, and I know you do, because you are not a born again Christian, you are a child of God. You do, you believe in him. He said, if you truly believe in him, he said, you have everlasting life. You have eternal life inside you. That eternal life is a life that never finished. One. Secondly, eternal life is the God kind of life. I will show you some other scriptures that render this and explain it very well. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Let's go to another scripture. No, we are studying the Bible. So let's look to the book of uh, Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Thank you, Jesus. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Look at it. Thank you, Jesus. Second Peter chapter 1, look at verse 2. He said, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge, hallelujah, of God. The knowledge of God can be found in the word of God. Through the knowledge of God and what? And of Jesus Christ. So if you are Jesus Christ and you give yourself to the word of God, he said you have grace and you have peace. And not just one, not just two, the multiplied version. <laughs> is being supplied to you every day. There, is, there are graces being supplied to you as a believer every day. There, are, there, there, are, there, are, there is peace that is being supplied to you every day. You know what Moses told the children of Israel in the wilderness? Moses, he told the children of Israel something. Let me, let me share this with you. He said God brought them out of the land of Egypt to do what? To bring them in to bring them in, into what? Into what? Into where? This is where we need to understand the word of God. Because to some Christians, all they know is that they are saved though, I am saved. But they don't understand why they were saved. Why were you saved? You know, when you believed in Jesus, you got the life of God in your spirit. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 23. Maybe this is going to help us to understand this more. Moses was talking there to the children of Israel. 
and he was telling them God's word. Deuteronomy chapter six. I call this dethrone your enemy. Deuteronomy chapter six, verse 23. Verse 23. Oh, yes, look at it here. He said, and he brought us out from thence that he might bring us in, you see, to do what? To give us the land which is swear unto our fathers. You see, you see, brothers and sisters, when you read this place, you will be, you will be tempted to believe that the land that Moses was really talking about was the physical land of Canaan that God will give them. But when you look at it from your spiritual eye, from your revelational eye, when you look at it with that revelational eye, you will understand that, wow, this is not just a physical landed property. No, he was actually talking about a spiritual placement, a spiritual realm of authority, of dominion, of power and of reigning. He, say, he said in the book of, of, of Hebrews chapter 6, the writer of Hebrews said, Hebrews chapter 11, he said that they were looking for a city, looking for a land whose builder, whose maker is God. So this is not just an ordinary land. This was actually a, 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 a typology Okay, let me break that down. It was actually foreshadowing what will happen in the generation after Christ of the, in our time. In the realm, in the generation where the Holy Spirit will be the order of the day. This is the dispensation of the Spirit. You must take coming to church seriously because this end time, Coming to church is important. You will learn the word of God. Look at what we are learning. This is beautiful. Look at what we are learning. Because you can just read this and say, oh, yes, God is going to give them a land. Kena, Kena, Kena. But in the book of Hebrews, he was telling them that, remember, he was telling the children of Israel, you know, when Jesus came, he told them, he said, even Abraham, your father, wanted to see my day. And he saw it and he was he rejoiced. And they said, eh? You are not even 33 years old, and you have seen Abraham. Now we know that you are not normal. <laughs> you know, beautiful. The word of God is beautiful. And in the book of Rome, of I mean, the book of Hebrews, he said they were looking for a city. Ayanamakashanda. They were looking for a land whose builder and maker is God. Is God. Can I show you another scripture? Can I show you another scripture? First Peter. Let's back up a little bit, Pastor, to First Peter. You know, we read first, uh, Second Peter chapter one, verse two. Now we want to open this thing up. Let's go a little bit deeper into it. Let's go a little bit deeper into this. Uh, first Peter chapter one. Everybody, open your Bible. Let's look at First Peter chapter one, verse two. First Peter chapter one, verse two. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Look at it. First Peter 1 to Elet. Elet. Hallelujah. Mando Kosho Keliada Elet, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus. Look at it. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. He's saying you are the elect of God. You have been called by the foreknowledge of God. It means that God had us in mind right from the get-go. <laughs> Hallelujah. He had us in mind. Let's read verse, verse 3, sir. Let's go to verse 3, then you see, you see it better now. Verse 3, blessed. He said, blessed be the God 
and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Thank God Jesus resurrected. It talks about in, in verse 2, it talks about the foreknowledge. What does that word foreknowledge mean? Because sometimes when you read it from other Bible translations, they don't really present it very well. He said, he led according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. He said, blessed be God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy had begotten us unto a lively hope. Hope by resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Look at verse, verse 4 now. <laughs> you know, this, this thing is just so sweet. It's so powerful. Look at it. He said, to an inheritance, this type of inheritance that is incorruptible and undefined, and that faded not away. It doesn't get, you can't exhaust the inheritance that we have through Jesus Christ. Just know who you are. Reserved in heaven for you. So we still have reserve. <laughs> so we still have a reserve. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is, this is the realm that God has called us into. To now open all these things up and make it more powerful. To bring it home. Look at what he said in Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Romans chapter 12. Romans 12. Verse 3. You know, if you read from verse 1, it will say, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body, living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. But I'd like you to look at verse 2. Romans chapter 12. Let's look verse 2. We'll look verse 2. Pastor, we'll start from verse 2 and then we'll come to verse 3. Thank you. Uh, as you talk, he said, and be not conformed to this world. Hallelujah. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is that good? What is that perfect? What is that acceptable will of God? Look at verse 3 now. Verse 3 now. He said something here in verse 3. He said, for I say, for I say, through the grace given unto me, there is grace available for us. To every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according, look, oh my, yada, kabashadia, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So all of us have the measure of faith. All of us have it. All of us have it. God gave the same amount of faith to all of us. When you gave your life to Christ, we all have the same amount of faith, but you have to grow your faith. That's what we are talking about, growing the light, growing in the light. The light can be intensified, give it more voltage, buy a, a, a bulb with, with higher watts, and then you will get more brightness, you see? And it is the word of God that produces the brightness produces it. If you, you know, so many years ago, my father and the Lord told me, and then we just started mission also some years back. And then he said to me, he said, never build your congregation on signs and wonders because I know you like demonstration of power. <laughs> and I laugh and it's true. It's true. Those who know me from the get go knows that I can sit here, I will touch the television set, and I will tell you, go and touch that television if you will stand. If you touch the television, you are on the floor, slain under the power of the Holy Ghost. I love demonstration of power. I love manifestation because that is where I grew up. In the place I grew up, if you don't demonstrate power, they will kill you in your mother's womb. You will, the person will die in his prime. So, so you need power. So I love demonstration of power. So when I saw it, hey, in the place I grew up with, when 
Even, even magicians and native daughters come outside to, to show power, the one that is strongest. So that is the way it is. So my father and the Lord wrote me this letter very long. He always writes epistles. He was very, very articulate and smart. He's late now. And then he said to me, he said, you know, the father is late. Don't me, I don't have father in the Lord again. <laughs> I have other father in the Lord. Very, very important. I'm always bringing myself under authority. It is very important for my preservation. Personally, is my choice. So, so he sent me that letter and he said to me, he said, never build your congregation on signs and wonders. Build them on the word of God and signs and wonders will never finish in your ministry. Bam, I got it. That made me to begin to go into the world and start studying and start looking what is in the word of God for me, what is in the Bible for me. So he said to me that God has given us the measure of faith. He gave you the measure of faith, the same one he gave to me. We all became born again the same day. From that day, we got born again. From that day, we got saved. From that day, we became a Christian. From that day, we take on the responsibility to begin to grow our Christian life. I call it growing in the light. Growing in the light. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are you still in 2 Peter chapter 1? Let's look at that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Second Peter chapter one. I want to read that now. You know, we read verse two before. Now I want to read from verse one to four so that you will understand the discourse that Peter was trying to, you know, the message he was conveying. He was trying to convey. Second Peter. Yeah, second Peter chapter one uh, from verse one. We'll read it through to verse four. I want to show you that this grace and truth is given and maintained by the word of God, by the knowledge of the word of God. You know, it's, he, he kept talking about grace and truth, grace and peace. Uh, the measure of it, it is maintained, it is, grow, it is grown, it is developed by the word of God. This is important. Second Peter 1, verse from verse 1, he said, Simon Peter is servant, and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith. So he's talking to believers. He's not talking to unbelievers now. We who have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now we know and understand who he's talking to. Now that we understand the audience, verse 2, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. So it is the knowledge of God. The more you have knowledge of the word of God, how do you have knowledge of God? Through the word of God, through the Bible, reading the word of God. So, so more knowledge you have about God, the more you will grow, the more your light will shine. Verse 3 now. I want to show you. How the, if, look at the word. This word, knowledge of God here. Pastor, can you back up? Let me just quickly say that one because sometimes you need to go to the original text and bring out the real meaning of some words. Now, the word knowledge here is the Greek word epignosis. Is the Greek word epignosis. Epignosis. E-P-I-G-N-O-S-I-S. -S. Epignosis. Epignosis. This is very much. The word, and it is not talking about uh, Knowledge of, uh, let's just have, uh, there are different kinds of knowledge. It's not talking about, I have a knowledge of, of book. No, it's not talking about book knowledge. It's not, no, no, that's not what it's talking. It's not talking about science knowledge, no. He's talking about revelational knowledge, rela relational knowledge, a knowledge that comes from revelation and relationship. That is why the dimension of prayer that we bet this kind of knowledge of God is not the one that kills demon every day. <laughs> it's not the one that is looking for miracle every day. I don't know whether you are getting my point now. 
So the kind of, of revelation and relationship that we give birth to epignosis is the knowledge of God, the knowledge of God, the knowledge of the word of God. When you begin to have an intercourse with the word of God, this is when you have felt there is the word fellowship. It is the same word translated in the book of, of Genesis when the Bible says, and Adam knew is what the word knew there is talking is from the Hebrew word yada. And yada is talking about having a, a deep relational knowledge of somebody. This is epignosis. This is the realm God wants us to get into. This is the kind of knowledge. This, this is not the knowledge that pastor know, know God for you. No, no, this, this is not that realm. This is not uh, uh, a man of God, sir. Man of God, sir. What is God saying about me? <laughs> man of God, sir. Man of God, no. This is not the realm. You understand? Now, this is a realm of I know him whom I have believed, Amaka to see Bagada, and I am persuaded, Atakata, that neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, nor, nor, nor height, nor depth, Amadia, nor any such things can ever separate me from the love of God. When that guy was quoting that scripture, when that guy was writing that scripture, he was speaking from epignosis. He was speaking from yada. He was speaking from deep rooted, deep seated knowledge of God. Look, nobody can talk you out of what you know. This is experiential knowledge. This is experiential knowledge. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the epignosis of God and of Jesus Christ. This is deep. Let's go to verse 3 so that we understand better. Let's, let's climb a little bit. Now that you have this knowledge, this epignosis of God, according as his divine power, Adobe, Adaka, Toli, Manayada. Hey, pardon me. I it's just that sometimes when I read this thing, it jumps on me. According as his divine power has given unto us, ah, ye, 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 ye. all things, Sadia, ah, Kataya, that pertains unto life. And godliness, I, I, we, I like reading it again from the beginning, according as his divine power, because we have epignosis of him, because we have experiential knowledge, who can talk you out of what you know, because you know this thing, experientially, experientially, we are called unto glory and excellence. Listen, child of God, listen, let me tell you, your life that God called you to live is a life of excellence. It's a life of glory. He called us unto glory and virtue. That is the realm he called us. Look at it. Look at it. He said, according as his divine power are given unto us all things that pertains unto life and godliness. Look at it again. He repeated it again. Through the knowledge, through the epignosis of him. Through the epignosis of him that has called us out of darkness into light to glory and virtue. So we are called for glory. We are called into a realm of glory, into a life of glory, into a life of virtue. This is the realm. This is the kind of life God called us for. Anything short of this is an embarrassment to the owner of the kingdom. We are the king's kid. This is what it is. We are the king's kid. I will show you another scripture. Now let's go to verse 4 now. Then you see where he now hit it now. Verse 4 now. Kado shadi adagada. Whereby, hallelujah, hallelujah. Whereby are given unto us a seeding great. This, this, is, this is high level superlative. A seeding, one, great, two, and precious promises. Hallelujah. That by these, ye might be what? Partakers of the divine nature. What nature are you trying to, what, what is this scripture telling now? Come, 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 come. This is serious. Look at the scripture now. Let's look at it very well. Is this scripture trying to tell us that we are partakers 
No, 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 no. Of Adamic nature? No, that is not that. Okay. Oh, now, partakers of the divine, what divine nature? We are partakers of the nature that Christ gave us the day we gave our life to Christ. Wow. So we have become partakers. Okay. Let me quickly go a little bit into the original text and let us know what is the meaning of the word partakers. We have become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped. So we are those people who escaped corruption. That is in the world. So we, we, are not, we don't really belong here. We are just here operating here, but we are operating from a different kingdom uh, with a different nature. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The word partaker in the original Greek, because that's a Greek word, and the word partakers in the original Greek means, in that scripture, is, it means koinonos. You've been hearing the word koinonia and all those in, in all those forms. Now, this is koinonos. And it means one that is an associate. Okay, now you are getting it. So when he was saying that you have become a partaker of the divine nature, this partake is not like you escort me to shop, to, to shop, right? Or you escort me to, to the market. Oh, we are, you are escorting me. Come and escort me. No, this is not escort. It's not, oh, let's go for shopping together. This one is not escort for shopping. That word escort, that type of escort, that word, it, it's from the Greek word um, lambano. It's from the Greek word lambano. So, so, but this one that 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 Jesus is that that uh, Peter was talking about here is talking about koinonos, and koinonos is talking about an associate that you have become an associate with Christ. You are now the same nature, the same divine nature in Christ is the same divine nature impacted into our spirit the day we gave our life to Christ. This is what I have been trying to get you to understand. That what cannot afflict Christ shouldn't afflict me, shouldn't afflict you. This is what I'm, if you get it, then you will, you will, you will rebel against any nonsense. Because the enemy has, has, has violated a jurisdiction and he must be sent packing. Mando koshabaya dagada. This is sweet. This is beautiful. You know what this means? That we can share. We, it is possible for us to share food together. It is possible for us to eat together, but we are not actually having fellowship together. I don't know whether you are getting my point now. Because it's not everybody you eat with that you have fellowship with. Eating together is not the same thing as having fellowship together. When you have fellowship, he said, our fellowship is with the son, is with the father. It's with, it's with the father of light. With him, there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said he has given us the divine nature. Divine nature. Pastor, can you go back to that? Divine nature. He has given us divine nature. We have become partakers. We have become associated with him in divine nature. What does the word divine nature mean? It's from the Greek word theos.
Ebregedo Kasa Tabayada. Do I still have you? Uh, um, are you still hearing me? Yes. We have the divine nature. The nature of God is inside of us. The nature, we have become God kind. Look at it, verse 4. Wherefore are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of what? The divine nature. The divine nature. The Theas Fusios. You have become God kind. You have become God kind. So we are not ordinary people. Hello, sister. You are not ordinary. You are not ordinary. We have become, we have become God kind. We have become God kind. We are not, not operating with mankind. You get it now, but God kind. If you have this knowledge, you can place a demand in the realm of the spirit. You can do things. You can enforce things in this realm. Oh, yeah, manaka The day we know this thing, our life will change. My life changed the day I knew this. Oh, yes. <laughs> Your life will change forever. That, that you are not just a product of your father and your mother coming together. That is a dimension of you. But Christ has come to reveal the true dimension of you. That the day you now accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, your life automatically take a new dimension. You have become one with God. Hey, you have become one with Christ. Uh -huh, you are getting it now. You are getting it. One with him. So Christ brought us into oneness. You know why I was telling you last time that if you, if you want to understand Christianity, go and read John chapter 17. That John 17, you know John 17, is, Jesus was saying there, he said that they might be one with us just as we are one. That they may be one. This is a realm. This is an understanding. This is an epignosis that when you come into this reality, People will be wondering what has gone wrong with you. Because you will not think the way they are thinking. You will not see things the way they are saying things. Sometimes they will think that you have your, your own thing is too much. <laughs> Some of you are already experiencing what I'm talking about. Sometimes they will say, well, look, are you the only Christian? But you cannot just bring yourself down to operate like the elements. Because God has placed you in a realm where you can dominate. That is the realm God brought us into. I was listening to one of my foremost mentors in, the, in, in, in this work of God, in this, in, this, in this kingdom, in this life of, of the kingdom. Oh, time, time is fast. Let me tidy this. I was listening to him. He's late now. Um, and then he was talking about the, the, the concept of kingdom, how God is a king and is in heaven. And that the story of the Bible and the story of Christianity is, is the story about the king, his kingdom, and his, ch his children. The king being God, who and his kingdom is heaven, who chose to send his children. So we are the king's kid. Who chose to send his children into another world in order to dominate and that the realm of god is the realm of dominion he was just talking about this and i was like wow this is beautiful you know uh, i was like this is great this is this is powerful dr miles monroe he was explaining this i was like child this is great this is the truth we have we are the king's kid he has brought us that is why he called us royal priesthood so when I speak the word to anything, that very word will create 
what you called it for. We call those things that be not as though they were, and then they be. If I speak the word to dead things, then it will give life to those dead things because the word that we speak, Jesus said they are spirit and they are life. So when I speak the word, it misses with the spirit and it produces life. This is what happens. Speaking God's word and responding to the word of God is very, very important. Don't just speak it only, but respond to it. Take the, the, the relevant actions with it. And you will see it manifest in your life in the name of Jesus. Can we read James chapter 5 as we round up? James chapter 5. But before we go to James chapter 5, sir, let's read Mark 7. Mark chapter 7, verse 27. Jesus gave us a graphic example of something very, very beautiful when he was talking about healing, healing and divine health. You see, my prayer for you, I'm praying for everyone that is with us on the Bible study today. May God give you divine health in the name of Jesus. May God give you divine health. And I will pray that prayer again and again and again for you. May God give you divine health in the name of Jesus. Look at Mark chapter 7, verse 27. He said, but Jesus said unto her, let the children eat first. <laughs> my own, my own uh, words coming into it. Let the children come and eat first. For it is not meat to take the children's food and give it to dogs. Oh, my God. You are maladi akata. Now, now you will say that this is heavy insult. Jesus Christ insulted this woman by this statement, calling this woman a dog, and that the children should come and eat first, and that before he, God will now begin to look at this uh, this woman, let the children eat. First. You know, you will explain this stuff like that. But I pick a word here. The Bible says Jesus said healing belongs to the children. Healing is the children's bread. Healing is the children's bread. Can I tell you something? Not the kingdom bread, if I will put it like that. We are children of the kingdom. But God did not expect us to remain children. He expected us to grow into sonship. He expected us to grow. Our light must grow, must grow, must grow. The light must continue to shine brighter and brighter and brighter until the perfect day. It is possible. Spiritual growth is possible. When you, you know one thing, when you're actually growing in the spirit, it will show around you. That's what light does. Light, light shines brighter around you and he reveals things around you the more you see things the more light shines the more clearer everything becomes oh 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 oh, oh. that devil is trying to hide in that corner oh, yeah, i bind you get out from my son in jesus name and then this you were not seeing clearly before oh 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 now you are seeing it clear you are seeing it clear Shabarada Galiada. Healing is for children. Health is for sons. <laughs> you see? So God wants us to grow. You need to be sick to get healed. But he said, I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in health. Not and be healed. Because healing is for children. And he said, okay, 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 healing is for children. He's not saying healing is bad. He said, well, you, if you are a child, so you fall sick, and then the Lord heal me. So you, you need the elders you now lay hands on you. You know, for elders to come and lay hands on you, those elders must not be sick. Though it is an expectation in the kingdom that elders don't fall sick. Elders don't get sick because elders are not expected to fall sick in the kingdom because they are elders. Do you know what it means to be an elder? Not just to put oil upon your head. I'm not talking about those elders. <laughs> I'm not talking about those elders. 
Healing is for children, sir. Yes. Health is for sons. Health is for daughters. As many as receive, he gave them power to become sons and daughters of the kingdom. So, James chapter 5, verse 14 said, Is any sick among you? Let him pray. Is any having this? Is it let him call for the elders? Okay, can we read James chapter 5? James chapter 5. Thank you, Holy Spirit. James chapter 5. So the next time your body is feeling so, I tell them, say, I'm not a baby, I'm not a baby, I'm not a baby. Get out in Jesus' name. I am not a baby. Jump up. <laughs> Jump up and do what you think you couldn't do before. And you will see that devil will run away. Because it is children that will take duvet and cover their head. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. And then, and then, and then say, no, this, how is he doing you? He says, he's doing me one kind, he's doing me one kind. <laughs> children and they say okay sorry sorry and and if you don't visit children ah, they say that church they don't have love they don't even care for anybody you are still a child grow up why are you sick children are the ones sick grow up so that you will be the one going you become an elder and that is the realm he called us into kings and priests elders in the kingdom elders in the things of the spirit so that you'll be the one now going out there is there any sick in this place hey brother what is going on okay receive your healing in jesus name hallelujah now let's read, look at it james chapter 5 verse 40. is there any sick among you who should they call for the elders elders here is not talking about those whom the poor ororo on the <laughs> and said, thou art the elders in this church. <laughs> That's what he's talking about. Because we have so many baby and children elders everywhere. <laughs> he's talking about those who have come to full stature. Those who by reason of use have exercised their senses and their spirit. And they are now able to discern between good and evil. Kabbalah the Adaga Shandayada. Those are the ones he's calling elders. Elders are not expected to fall sick because the elders are the ones that should be laying hands on the sick so that the sick will recover. <laughs> Look at it. Is any sick among you? Let him cover the elders of the church. He didn't say let him assume that the elders should know. Let him assume the elders should know. Don't they know that I am sick? You are the one to do the calling. Because we have church members who are not ready to take responsibility. They just want to blame pastors and blame ministers and blame church workers. They don't even ask of me. And I have been down. Whom did you call? Let him call for the elders of the church. Since you are the one sick, let him call. He didn't say, oh, don't you understand that he's sick? You should call. No, he said elders shouldn't call. The elders are adhered to anoint and pray over him. And then the prayer of faith shall save the sick. It is the sick that should call. How, how sick the person is, notwithstanding, it is the sick that should call for the elders. And the day I hear elders that are sick, God said, these are not elders. <laughs> And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord, Amando Koburi Abadakata, shall raise him up. And if he has committed any sin, it shall be forgiven him. Because the elders have prayed. Oh my God, am I having elders growing in this place? Let him call for the elders. Oh, hallelujah. I'm rounding up this now. I just want the elders. I want elders, elders, elders in the things of God. Elders who now understand how to operate eternal life. Elders who have grown spiritually. Elders who can blast in tongues. Elders who know that health is their portion. And healing belongs to children. Healing belongs to children. So they are ready to lay hands. The, the Bible didn't say, let them wait for elders to come. No, call the elders. May you grow into eldership. Now, can I say this to you? May people not follow you up forever. 
You know, there are some Christians, they are like we borrow. Anywhere you carry them rich, you leave them there. Uh, uh, if you come 10 years later, they are still struggling. Uh, why didn't you come to church today? Uh, my brother, I didn't wash my cloth. Ah! And there is somebody that just gave their life to Christ yesterday. Bam! On fire. Growing in the light. Growing in the light. Blazing in the fire. Rising in the light. Doing wonders in the light. Hey! Hey! There are no demilitarized zones in this kingdom. You are the king's kid. Growth and growing is available for you. Take hold of the word of God. Take hold of your prayer life. It is time to grow. This flight will not wait for anybody. Children need to grow into elderhood, eldership. Children need to grow. Let them call. Let them call. Let them call. Do I have elders in the house? Hallelujah. Let them call for elders. Elders, elders, it's time to lay hands. It's time to grow children into eldership. Elders, it's time to grow the children. Hallelujah. Mando ko shabayada. Leko bo soteli adabakata. Yeketu zamandia. Rogodosa. This is where I'm going to stop today. I already feel the power of God in my spirit. I feel the energy of Nayot Rama. Kato labre gedo kani manandia. Do you know what it means to be an elder in the gospel? Do you know what it means to be an elder in this kingdom? Oh my God. Do you know what it means to be an elder? It's not to carry title. <laughs> it's not to wear cassock. To be an elder in this kingdom, you must mature. You must grow in the things of the spirit. Yes, yes, yes. You must desire it. Don't just say, well, uh, me, I never reached like them. No! Don't let the devil catch you in that level. Rise. Rise, rise, rise in the name of Jesus. Close your eyes. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. If you are not baptized yet in the Holy Ghost, that is one realm that will move you into eldership quick, quick. I like you. As we begin to pray in tongues, you, it will come on you in the name of Jesus. You need an elder to lay hands on you. If you have not been baptized in the Holy Ghost, on Sunday come and just say, I need the baptism. The elder will lay hands on you. And also, elders are not those with gray hair. Elders are those who have learned the ways of the spirit. E kabarando sadi adagata. E kulandia berako te biandega. O zada dada man leke togosha. Ye shana namandeka. Ruse se badi anana. Ele gajando. Bo ramana kate liada bakashandi. Glory be to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.